today we are going to study a velocity time graph so in a velocity time graph we take velocity on the y axis and time on the x axis why do we take uh, time on the x axis so we call it is independent time, time is independent and velocity is dependent on time very nice because time is out of the two uh, quantities that we have taken time is not dependent on velocity is independent so we take it on the x axis okay now i have a graph of a velocity time graph which is a blue line you can see that okay so what is what kind of motion is this representing so a uniform motion okay aryan said uniform motion aryan how do you say it is uniform motion sir because velocity is the same very nice okay at the end of first second what is the velocity uh, so yeah. may i sat yeah satvik tell beta so 40 meter per second great it is 40 okay we see it is 40 and uh, at the end of second second sir then also 40 meter 40. per second third second also 40 so what kind of motion is this body showing uniform motion very nice and how do you know that how do you because know because distance travel the time in equal very nice because the velocity is uh, uh, same okay which means that in unit time this body is always covering the same amount of distance so this is uniform motion so uh, now uh, we can see that uh, the velocity is not changing which means that the body continues to have uh, i mean cover the same amount of distance in equal intervals of time so this is uniform motion right uh, when we had a distance time graph then a line parallel to the time axis what did it what kind of motion did it depict so mishka and aryan want to answer mishka hasn't got a chance to so we ask mishka yeah mishka tell me sir body is at rest very nice when we had a distance time graph and we had a line parallel to the time axis then it showed that the distance is not changing so that uh, graph showed a, a body at rest but when i have a velocity time graph and if i have a graph like this which is parallel to the time axis then this graph is showing uniform motion okay so uh Uh, in this graph can i find the instantaneous velocity uh, instantaneous velocity is the velocity at a given instant i i uh, suppose i say at the end of 4 seconds what is the velocity of the body so uh, this velocity is the instantaneous velocity at the 4th second and how much is that so may i satvik uh, yeah satvik so 40 meter per second 40 meter per second okay so uh, from the graph i can find the instantaneous velocity how do i do this satvik how do i do if if they give me a graph and they tell me that find the velocity in the fifth second how do i do that chalo we move forward okay uh, they say that find the instantaneous velocity at the fifth second so from the time axis i draw a perpendicular onto the graph now this graph is very simple this is a parallel line so uh, we know that now wherever the line intersects the graph from there i draw another perpendicular now onto the y axis and wherever it meets the y axis that is the velocity in this case it will always be 40 meter per second understood all of you yes sir yes sir yes yeah. so so the first thing which i can find out looking at a velocity time graph is the instantaneous velocity uh, does anybody have any idea what else can i find from a uh, velocity time graph sir distance sir distance okay uh, the distance covered if it's a speed time graph or the displacement if it is a velocity time graph right yes sir yeah so uh, how how do we find uh, the displacement in this so may i start with Okay, Satvik. How do we do that? Sir, we will find the area enclosed by the velocity time graph to find the displacement. Very nice. Okay. Uh, how did we find the speed in distance time graph? Sir, by finding the slope. Very nice. So I had told you if somebody tells you, asks you, how will you find the speed in a distance time graph? You have to say that uh, we will find the speed by finding the slope of the graph. 
So here also, if somebody asks you, how will you find the displacement in a velocity time graph, then you have to say, or uh, how will you find the distance in a speed time graph, then you have to say that we can find it by finding area under the graph. Understood everybody? Yes. Sir. You yes, get sir. you get one mark questions they, where they ask you how can you find uh, displacement or distance in a speed time graph. So your answer should be we can find it by finding area under the graph. Okay. Now I ask you uh, that what is the displacement from the second second to the fifth second? No. Okay. See, I, uh, they say from the second second to the fifth second. So I draw a, I told you, perpendicular line onto the graph. Okay. And it meets the graph over here. So I call this A. Again, I draw a perpendicular from the fifth second. It meets the graph over here. I call it B. Okay. And then I name the fifth second as C. I name the second second as D. So I have told you that we can find displacement by finding the area. So in this case, displacement is equal to area of the rectangle. Very nice. And what's the name of the rectangle? ABCD. Excellent. ABCD. Okay. Understood everybody? So we yes. know we know the formula for finding the area of a rectangle. What is it? Length into breadth. Excellent. Length, Length into, breadth. into breadth. Okay, length into breadth. Uh, so now in this case, in this case, what is the length? What is the length? Length is DC. Sir. It is DC, right? This this thing, the yellow line is the length. And what is the breadth? The breadth is uh, CB, correct? Uh, any doubt? No, sir. No, the yellow line is the length. We take it as the length. And we take the uh, dotted pink line as the breadth, CB as the breadth. Okay. So in this case, it becomes, uh, this becomes uh, T2 minus T1. Right? Yeah. Yes, sir. And uh, it's uh, uniform motion. The velocity always remains the same. So we straight away put into V. Right. So what does it become? It becomes uh, uh, 5 minus 2 is three okay and the velocity always remains the same in this case so three seconds into 40 meter per second and our answer is displacement is equal to three for the 12 120 meters i hope everybody has understood yes sir. yeah uh, if they ask you how can you find a displacement in a velocity time graph or distance in a speed time graph what will be your answer Sir, to, by finding the area enclosed by the graph. Very nice. Anybody, any doubt? Look, another graph. Okay, here we have, and this again is a velocity time graph. So we put velocity in meter per second on the y axis. Why do we take time on the x axis? I'll ask this once again. Sir, it is because sir, time is independent uh, quantity and velocity is a dependent quantity. Okay, out of the two quantities, time is an independent one. It is not dependent on velocity. Which Out of the two quantities, whichever is independent of the other, we take it on the x-axis. So, we are taking time on the x-axis. Okay, now uh, let's analyze what kind of a graph is this. Okay, uh, what is happening to the velocity? Sir, accelerate. Okay. Yeah, sir, this is accelerated motion. Yeah, this is accelerated motion. Sir, because the velocity is moving, uh, the graph of velocity is moving upward only. Okay. Because it is inclined to the time axis. Okay. The straight graph, line inclined to the time axis. We, we have a straight line which is inclined to the time axis. Uh, Aaron, had this been a distance time graph, then what kind of motion would that be? Sir, if it is in distance time graph, the uh, motion is uniform motion. Excellent. Everybody understood? Aryan says that this kind of a graph, when we see it's a, if it's a distance time graph, then there the body is covering equal distance in equal intervals of time. That's uniform motion. But here, if you see here, the velocity is increasing. Okay. 
uh, after 5 seconds, uh, the velocity was 10 meter per second. After 10, now it doubles up. 20 meter per second. So, is the distance covered same or has it changed? So, changed. Yeah. Now, now, the body is covering a greater distance per second. Now, it is covering 20 meters every second. And after 15 seconds, you can see now it is covering even greater distance. Now, the velocity has increased to 30 meter per second. So, what is the distance at this instance the body is covering? So, 30 kilometers. Okay. So, so let's analyze, okay, how much is the velocity changing? We take the uh, time interval and we take the change in velocity. And let's analyze, okay. Uh, uh, when the velocity changes, I mean, when, uh, when the time period is 5 seconds, when the time period uh, changes from 0 to 5, what is the change in velocity? Sir, it's 10 meter per second. Okay, it becomes 10. Okay, in the next 5 seconds from 10 to 15, in the next 5 seconds from 10 to 15, how much is the change in the velocity? Sir, 20 meter per second. Oh, 30 meter per second. I've, I've, I've written delta V. Delta V means a change in velocity. Oh, uh, sir, 10 meter. Excellent, it is again 10 meter seconds. Now, from uh, 15 to 10, we have done 20 to 15. Again, 5 seconds. What is the change in velocity? 10 meter. Again, it is 10, again 10 meter per second. Okay. So, you can see that the change in velocity is the same in each interval of time. Every 5 seconds, it is increasing by 10 meter 10, per second. 10 meter per second. Yeah. So, uh, you have understood, uh, RN had said that this is accelerated motion. What kind of acceleration? Uniform acceleration. Excellent. Uniform accelerated Uniform. motion. But yeah, very nice. So, this is the motion of a body which is uniformly accelerated. I hope everybody has understood. Right? Uh, now, uh, what else can we find out from a velocity time graph? Sir, distance. Displacement. Displacement. We can find the displacement. Okay. So, in this case, if I tell you that find the displacement within the 10th second and the 20th second, uh, what do we do? Sir, we make perpendicular uh, to 10th uh, second. Okay. And 20 seconds. So, we make a perpendicular from 10 seconds. It meets the graph at A. We make a perpendicular from 20 seconds. It meets the graph at B. Okay. So, we have a figure A, B, C, D. Right? Yes, yes sir. sir. So, yes, if, sir. if we find the area of this figure, if we find the area of this figure, then we will be able to know the displacement. Correct? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, how do we find the area of this figure? Sir, it's a trapezium or we can, sir, make it a, a square and triangle. Very nice. That was RM. Triangle, sorry. No, sir, Satvik. Satvik, okay, okay. great. Great, Satvik. Satvik tells us that there are two ways. One is that we see that ABCD is a trapezium. So, using the formula of trapezium, we can find. The other, he says, is... I draw a perpendicular on to BC from A and I get a triangle. Okay, so I can find the area of the triangle and then add it to the area of the rectangle. Okay, so do we do it this way first? So displacement is equal to what do we write? Area enclosed by the very, graph. Very nice area under the graph. That's what Satvik tells us. Okay. So, now this is equal to area of triangle A. Uh, we haven't named it. A, B, C is already there. We name this C. We make it B and we make this A. Okay. So, uh, area of triangle A, B, C plus area of rectangle uh, A, C, D, A. Okay, so this is equal to, what's the formula? 1 by 2 into base into height plus okay. uh, L into B. Okay, plus L into B. Okay, Three. yeah, this is height into base and this is, okay. So now we put the values, okay. So this becomes half. 
what is the base 20 minus 10? This is T2, yes, T2 minus T1, 20 minus 10, 10, very nice. So we put 10 over there. And what is the height? Height is uh, V2, 40 minus 20. V2 minus V1, 40 minus 20. So it becomes 20. 20, but yeah. And what is the length? The length remains the same. It is uh, 10. And the breadth is? The breadth is 20 minus 0. Is again 20, right? Yes. yes sir. Okay. So into 20. So it becomes, we cancel this. And this becomes 10. So this is equal to 100 plus 200. Plus 200. Which is equal to 300 meters. Everybody understood? Yes, yes sir. Yes, great, sir. great. Okay. Now, uh, the other method they told us is that finding the area of the trapezium. Okay. So, uh, let's try it that way also. Okay. Let's try it that way also. Uh, so, displacement is equal to area of trapezium. Okay. And what is the formula for area of trapezium? May I, sir, may I Satvik? Yeah, Satvik. So, 1 by 2 into uh, perpendicular into sum of the parallel sides. Okay. 1 by 2 sum of parallel sides into the height. Height. Right? Yeah. So, which, yes, are the, which are the two parallel sides here? Sir, A, E and B, T. Very nice. A, E and B, T. The blue lines are the parallel lines. Okay. And E, D is the height between them. Right? Yes, sir. So, we put half and uh, the value of uh, A, E is how much? 10. 20. Okay. And what is the... Uh, uh, I mean, uh, this... Uh, let me write E, D. Okay, so it becomes half 20. And what is the height of BD? 40. Okay, plus 40. 40. And what is ED? 10. 10. 10. 10. Okay. Okay, so it becomes, what does it become? It becomes 1, one by 2, two into 600, which is again 300 meters. So we get the same answer. Can you see that? Yes, yes, sir. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, remember these two formulas. When we do derivations tomorrow, then we'll be using them. We'll be using both area of trapezium as well as area of triangle plus area of rectangle. I hope all of you have understood. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, great. If my graph is like this, a velocity time graph. So, what does this tell? A retardation. Very nice. This is retardation. Okay. The velocity is reducing. You can see the velocity was 20 and then it reduces in the next two seconds. And in the next two seconds, it again reduces to zero. So this is retarded motion. Yes, yes. yes sir. Great. Now we go to the last one. Okay. Now I have velocity time graph, which looks somewhat like this. Okay. What is it telling? What is it telling? Sir, may I? Uh, Aryan. Yeah, Aryan. From A to B, what is happening? Sir, A to B, the body is in accelerate motion. But yeah, it is uniformly... Uniform accelerated but motion. Yeah, nice. It is uniformly accelerated motion from A to B. B to C. Sir, uh, retardation motion. Uniform, uh, uniform retardation. And then C to D, again, uniform acceleration. And D to E... Again, uniform retardation. Uniform retardation. Okay. So, retardation. Uh, so this is uh, an example of non-uniform non motion. Non motion. This is an example of non-uniform motion. The velocity is uh, sometime increasing and sometime it is decreasing. decreasing. Understood all of you? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, uh, that finishes our velocity time graph. I hope... All of you have understood it nicely.